Yep. We will convene tomorrow on the Lord's Day to summon a demon. Ah, yes. Summon. Hello, and welcome to Co-op the Podcast. Oh, yeah, I'm Jesse. Yeah. Uh, But yeah, this is Co-op the Podcast. I'm your host, Jesse, and uh, alongside me is my lovely wife and co-host. Me! I'm Raven. Hi! Hello, everybody. Thanks for joining us on this beautiful Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. This is on-demand media. Thursday. You listen to it when you feel like it. Friday. Saturday, even Sunday. Welcome. Yeah, any <laughs> single day of the week. Literally any day of the week. All eight of them. You're welcome for this constant content. Yep, constantly uh, consumable. Twenty six episodes consumable uh, yes. as of this this one. This today. Yeah, so we're gonna truck on. I mean, each one is what roughly an hour long. Yeah, give an or hour, take. Hour sometimes and a half. less, sometimes more. Yeah, I think that. But that means that would be like an hour and seven minutes yeah i mean we're over 26 hours of content produced of my voice right now in your ear holes that means people are out there right now deep faking our uh, conversations they have enough oh nice they have all they need dope i love it yep uh but yeah so we are a weekly podcast if you don't know who we are and you want to listen to this one first and then go back and listen to all the others uh, we're a weekly podcast. Uh, we are a couple that likes to game together, have fun together, and yeah, we have a lot everything of everything that we do. Interests and um, different hobbies, so like comic books, movies, film, TV, nerd stuff in general, and then also like football and sports and yep, diet recently, and workout. just like the rest of America, women's soccer. Women's soccer. I do. I played soccer. Yeah, for Raven's like a lot more invested uh, life. <laughs> over a length of time. But yeah, I, like I the rest up, of America, only care about it once every, how yeah. often is it? Four years, right? Or something? Yeah, there's like a so. thing every four years. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I was like heartbroken. when I, I grew up in Atlanta and we had a women's soccer league and we used to go all the time to those games. It was the Atlanta beat and then they got rid of them. Yeah. And they had the fucking like Silverbacks. It was yeah. the Atlanta male the, team, and they fucking suck. I remember when the Silverbacks uh, were around. I, yeah. I, I saw a couple of those games. Now they have I remember Atlanta showing United. up at the parking lot because we went. So my family, we have gone to some baseball games. We had gone to some football games. We were like, we got to get there early because the parking lot's going to be crowded. There's Men's nobody soccer. there. Ever. Ever. <laughs> For the the women's backs, soccer was, there. I feel like, a little bit more hyped because, I don't know, I guess just in Atlanta, like, girls' soccer is so collect like yeah, it, uh, that's the thing. girls do it all the time so but yeah whatever either way uh yeah we enjoy everything uh together so we, we yeah. want to share that with the world and we also want to share our message about how you don't have to be a super fan to enjoy stuff yeah we're super casual about literally yeah. everything no gatekeeping no gatekeeping here. at all whatsoever uh all inclusive everybody should get to enjoy the stuff that we like and we enjoy and that's yeah. if you like it do it do it love it Talk to us about it on uh, our social media Twitter. pages. Yeah. Instagram. At Co-op the Podcast. Facebook, too. We have a lot of people on Facebook that interact with us all yeah, the time. The occasional beep you might hear going off on the audio. Because I Sorry. think it does come off. It's probably our Patreon. <laughs> where we have uh, many people no, engaged just... as well. And you can find us on Patreon.com, I think, at slash Co-op the Podcast. C-O-O-O-P-T-H-E-P-O-D-C-A-S-T. Uh, and join our Patreon group. You can join the Discord channel and chat with us directly uh, while we record. Exactly. All day, every day. We're just logged Literally in. Literally all day, every day. Uh, and we talk on there. You can also get access to some cool behind-the-scenes content uh, and get, you know, Goodies, other good stuff. merch and yeah, stuff. Merch you can get stuff. merch. Uh, we're going to start doing more of that a lot, like, as soon as we start getting more patrons. But we love our current ones, and they're amazing. If you listen to our last episode, uh, episode 25, it was a Q&A episode, and our patrons got priority on asking yeah, us and questions. Yeah, and they gave us some good questions. So Amazing questions. Join. It's a great community, and we'd love to have you. Yeah, join. Listen. Yeast. Chat. 
Uh, anyways. Join us. So, uh, we usually begin our podcast with some announcements. Anything going on? We have a huge announcement. Huge. So, uh, I am pleased to announce that we're coming out with a brand new podcast. Uh, it's going to be starring myself and the lovely and wonderful Jenny Kubel, who was in our uh, Game of Thrones episode, episode 14. Um, and the podcast is called Book and Bitch. Now, Book and Bitch. What is this? Yeah, what is it? It is a book club podcast, uh, a bi-monthly book club podcast that Jenny and I will put out where we... So every two months? Nope, every two weeks. Ah. <laughs> uh, basically, we'll announce the books early, but you can listen to any episode that you want. But if you want to follow in, you're more than welcome to. Um, and basically, we'll talk about the book we're combining all the juicy bits of the book with like kind of kind of like that forward now, this is of gonna the be book like message spoiler heavy of it a podcast. isn't actually it's not we're gonna try to keep it less spoiler heavy just so that if you want to be so we'll like remove like massive like plot points yeah, like super... snape kills Dumbledore, those kind of things. Well, now you're making now our podcast really heavy. No. <laughs> but no, I think like, you know, if you're discussing books, right? Like, yeah, uh, it's like cultural context, uh, writing theory, things like that. But author backstories, which are going to be so exciting, especially in our first episode. Because in the first episode we're reading, We Have Always Lived in the Castle. Yep. Which is a book by Shirley Jackson, which she did uh, the very popular Netflix series was based on her book, The Haunting of Hill House. Right. So she is usually, people know her kind of as a horror author. And this is not the book not that they're taking scary. into The Haunting of Hill no. Season 2. No, no, no. I think, I for some stupid reason, I was like, no, it's The Taming of the Shrew. I can't remember what it is. It's not The Taming of the Shrew. That's a stupid thing for me to say. Yeah, Shakespeare, right? Uh, yeah, that's Shakespeare, and it's about yeah. Something else. <laughs> but so, okay, so this book, are they going to turn it into a series, though? So is this something it like... It is already a film that Ooh, came cool. out. Okay. But I don't know. But it's really good, and it, I definitely recommend everybody picking it up, like, from your library um, and giving it a read. It's super short and very engaging and, I think, reflective of really our society in general and how a community is together and how a community works together. So definitely or rather doesn't work together but go pick it up join us as we bitch on our podcast so yeah i'm excited i'm definitely gonna follow along reading the books yeah jesse has jesse's lucky because he has the list so far so he's kind of have you guys not released no it's technically on our website book oh i gotta double check well i know they can follow you on twitter and instagram and stuff right at book and bitch pod yes at book and bitch pod on twitter and instagram um and then you can go to www.bookandbitch.com where we do on the calendar section at the bottom of the page have uh the books planned for the upcoming month so in august like i said we're doing so our tentative release date is august 1st but who knows things come up so just keep that in mind uh our first one is we have always lived in the castle uh by shirley jackson and then our second book is Where the Crawdads Sing by Delia Owens, or I think it's De- Delia, Delia Owens. Now I'm like second guessing myself. Um, but that book is so amazing on Reese Witherspoon's um, kind of list. So it's so good. Um, and then the third book that we're reading this month is Stephen King's It for the release of the film. Yeah. And that's the one I'm getting a jump start on that. Because it is a billion pages long, guys. And we only have one copy of the of other it. book. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So. so it's like, we got to get on it real fast. So it is a long book. So if you want to be there for us. So Ginny's never seen it ever. Like the original version with uh, Tim Curry or nothing. Yeah. And she None hasn't the seen versions, the new one. And ones. she's never read the book, right? And she's never read the book. Her parents didn't like it when... She, they didn't want her to be scared. They protected her. They loved her a lot while my parents let my brother show me it when I was six. So. Yeah. But they still love me. They love me a lot. So that's why we're reading it um, is for the upcoming film. So we'll probably also watch the movie, the original movie, and then the first movie so that we can also compare it through different media. So that'll be really interesting too. 
So. Yeah. And as everybody knows who follows our podcast, we're about free plugs for advertisers. Uh, but on Book and Bitch, I suggest that you hold off or else I'll never give you any money. I know. Yeah. I'm like, but, I'm not telling you, go get your books from libraries. But uh, yeah, you say that on your pod. Here we can say Audible is a great place to get these books. In your Kindle, uh, whatever. Buy yeah, them on your Kindle. I think on Audible, they are very reasonably priced. Uh, where the Crawdads Sing and It, of course, were pretty hefty i think but uh are you know worth well, spending a credit on yeah it but, was um it's literally like 70 hours long it's yeah i know it's yeah oh well, it's 44 at a time at quarter which is what i listen to yeah so, so i don't want to be like math. close to it's, 70 it's like 60 it's gonna be like 50 something yeah yeah it's what it is but yeah uh, uh we always recommend audible we enjoy audible uh you get like credit a month for, for your subscription you can use that credit on these books uh, you can purchase additional credits and use them on the books. Uh, and like Raven said, you can always get these at the library. But um, I think where we live, we would, wait, what's it called? We have always lived in the castle. Yes, it is a It's long only like away. five bucks on Audible, too. Oh, yeah. And it's only like an hour and a half long on Audible the or two hours long. The so. book in general is like 80 pages. That's why I'm like, you could literally just go to the library, grab it, read it in an evening, and then return it. Yeah. So it's so easy to totally read. worth it, and totally a it's a great book, great book. I'm so excited to talk about it, and so is Jenny. Jenny's so excited to um, become more of a permanent part of the co-op, the podcast family. We're so happy to have her. Yeah, I'm so excited. This is our She's first friend, spinoff so. podcast in the co-op branding. Yes, the co-op brand, yeah. my brand. Put it on the little corner of the website. Yeah, TM. Cool. I didn't do that on the website, my bad. Yeah, I'll, I'll think about it. Yeah. I'll think about how to include it. Yeah, because we've got to roll it up. we got to become a conglomerate. Yes. We, can't, we have Aha, to. Time Warner, but co-op. Yes. Something like that. Anyways, uh, that's it for that announcement, I think, right? Unless you have anything else to add? Uh, that's it. No, uh, follow you guys. Out. Yeah. The, yeah. Yeah. Updates. Come uh, Come listen to it beginning of August, probably August 1st. But yeah. just in case there are any delays in production, we'll let you know if there are. But August 1st is our tentative date. And, and all please, updates will come out on Twitter yeah. and stuff. So. And I would love if people read it. I would love if people read along and then join in with us. And then through our Patreon, if you decide in the future you want to be a patron, which we recommend it, obviously. Uh, you'll get earlier access to books. You'll be able to join our, our special Discord channel where we're going to talk about it, like, as we're reading it, um, things like that. So just join us. We are, we would be so excited if you did. Yeah, super awesome. Yeah. Uh, cool. Okay. Uh, our only other announcement is yours as well on yes. Scratchcast. I don't do shit, people. <laughs> yeah, Jesse uh, doesn't do much. He supports well, me. He supports I have an announcement. me. He I... me. Uh... I don't know. I'm trying to think of one. Just to throw in here. Your parents are coming next week. That's true. That's an announcement. My parents yeah. are coming for everybody who gives a shit. Yeah. We're uh, going to explore Seattle. Yay. Yep. It'll be the second time in a couple weeks. My sister came like last oh, week, we, basically. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, getting our double dose of Seattle time yeah. and looking at all the touristy things. We had a great time with my sister uh, and her boyfriend, Alex. Uh, they're yes. super cool people. We, we got to much. ride up in the Ferris wheel and kind of get that nice scenic view, explore all the yeah. downtown areas. There's so many fun things to do it's in Seattle. Fun. They were saying, so I think this is a great way to describe Seattle. It's very, there are touristy things, but it doesn't feel touristy. Yeah. Like even when you go to like Pike Place, Pike Place, those are only fucking tourists. I mean, there are people there buying groceries and stuff, which is really cool. Yeah, I think like there's like a select people that live like in that area. There's also like a line coming out of the original Starbucks. So well, like, yeah, you yeah. know that they're there, but it isn't overwhelming. Yeah. Like even for in, like in the Ferris wheel and... Yeah, and in terms of cities, Seattle's pretty small. I mean, it's, it's hilly. Uh, so, you know, walkability is questionable. Yeah, we walked from like... Like where Pike places to a, an area called Cap Hill, and it is hilly. It was very yeah, hilly. It's a hill, but yeah, it was great fun. I think when my parents are here, we'll Uber. We instead. we will definitely Uber for your parents. Yeah, we'll Uber, uh, and we'll hit some of the some slightly different spots. I don't think they're Cap Hill people, but we'll. Uh, oh yeah, but we're gonna take them to Fremont, area. and a lot of people don't know what the Fremont Troll is. 
But we're going to take him to go see that. Cause, yeah, they will get a kick out of it. Yeah, because yeah, we're going to go get tacos. They should know it, I think, better. Because here's the thing is it was done in like the 90s. Yeah. When Emma really and Alex nice. were like five. Right. But or I less. Feel like My parents would have been paying attention it's... to artsy, fartsy things. That were... I don't think it's, I don't know. Uh, like, the reason why artsy, I think like thing. your sister and Alex would have known about it is because it's hip. It's kind of trendy. It has. It is very much on a lot of like marketing and branding. Right. And, like, That's what I'm saying. Seattle it was hip and trendy things. in the 90s. But it's hip and trendy. It, it's like, hip it's and trendy in Seattle now. still now. Yeah. But okay. it was hip and trendy publicly worldwide in the 90s. And That's so my true. parents for sure know what it is. Do they? I don't think they do though. They were hip and trendy people. We're in the also going to go up in the Space Needle. Did not know you actually on a Saturday you have to have a time selected or else you're going like four hours oh my after God, you yeah. buy tickets. That's insane. Yeah, we were there looking at the next available spot. It. It's like, okay, well, that's a... It's a big elevator, and then you can see... I mean, of course, everybody Seattle. wants to go up in it. We should have figured, but we didn't plan ahead well enough there. But, no. hey, we still got to do a lot of cool we stuff. We went so. to the Pacific Science Theater, or Center. I always say Pacific Science Theater, like Mystery Science Theater. Yeah. Um, Where we went into the butterfly room. This is with uh, Emma and Alex. Um, but the butterflies chose Jesse because yeah. he is... A fae king. He is our fae king. I think our it's because I'm tall fairy princess. like a tree. <laughs> That's true. You are tall like yeah. a tree. We were all like way shorter than you. So, yeah. Yeah. So, we have a lot of stuff planned. We're going to the Chihuly Museum with your parents. Yep. We're going to do that. We're going to uh, get coffee from the original Starbucks. Yeah. They'll be a lot more interested in actually waiting in line to do stuff like that. Where I think like His sister Emma and Alex like, were like, That's cool. Take me someplace cooler. Right. And yeah. we did because we found that little hidden garden. So. Oh, we did. And that was so much fun. Oh, my gosh. I yeah. didn't even know it existed. I loved yeah. it. But anyways, those are my announcements, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> so. Uh, so my announcement is last Thursday, this past Thursday, um, was my last episode on Fading Footsteps on Scraticus Academy. They have one more episode. So please go watch and support them and see where the story goes. If you have no idea what this is or would like to go back and watch former episodes, you can go to their YouTube after going to ours and listening to our uh, episodes on YouTube. Uh, but go to youtube.com, I think, slash uh, And they should have them video on demand. So I'm not on it anymore. However, I will be on their second season or their next season of streams coming up in August. Completely different. Completely yeah, different. Not story. related. Yeah, but yep, different be DMs, there. different, different parties. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, we're still playing D and D five E, but I won't give anything else away. It's gonna be really exciting. But I'll come up with a. A, a full announcement at a later date probably in august but i wanted to keep you guys updated because a lot of people were like why is this your last episode it's my last episode because my in-laws are coming into town next week but i loved it so much that i'm gonna be in it next season too and scraticus is amazing and i love what they do over there so um yeah so stay tuned for more information on that this is the last time you see my dumbass be on a twitch stream playing dnd yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, boy. Okay. But speaking of tabletop gaming, I thought we could start our hotcakes with some more information like that. Because lately yeah. we've been playing a lot of tabletop gaming. Well, yeah. So I think uh, it's pretty well known that we have like a Tuesday group that we play on, right? Like, yes. Uh, you know, we enjoy playing with our friends and we're hoping to eventually stream that yeah, whole thing. We with... have a huge idea huge for the idea whole for thing. It. So. Stay tuned uh, for that. Well, but we mix it up. We did a um, uh, one shot led by Raven. A uh, one shot, quote unquote, when your party doesn't do stupid shit and drag it out for like six weeks. Okay. So like I said, there are basic <laughs> D&D players that go about and they <laughs> follow all these basic tropes and things. We were just watching the latest season of Stranger, Stranger Things. Things. It was so good. We'll which I'm not going to like give away any like spoilers or anything. We will but give our... I'm watching. I'm like, they're not thinking this out. They are basic bitch D and D players because they're children. Right? They're also children, yes. But I think that's what one shots are designed for too. I'm like, no, 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 no. We're in a dungeon right now. There is a fifty fifty chance that this person we ran into is a baddie or a prisoner. I don't like those odds. Let's just kill him. I think that's a great idea. Jesse is a trope called a murder hobo. I mean, 
and who's gonna tell we're in the dungeon <laughs> it's not like the cops are around the corner I mean, saying and, oh, yeah shit, every you room was like a torture room so it was all really bad yeah. i like to say my dm story style i'm very much drawn to like creeptastic horror like very spooky creepy stuff and then beautiful like fantasy like super high fantasy like um like folklore ish in kind of nature um storytelling it's either it's either those two there is no in between <laughs> there i maybe don't ever i may not ever have a dragon in any of my one shots yeah or a troll oh well, i would have a troll but maybe not like a giant i may not have a giant you know so we're switching from me DMing that one shot, though, to um, our good friend, Corey, Corey A., yeah. yep. who we all know and love. Um, he's going to DM the next one. And the next one's super cool because it is the Star Wars tabletop RPG, which I actually don't have any of that information up right now. Yeah, because what it, like... What's it called? Edge of the Empire? Is that the one? Or Edge is of it the Empire? Yeah, I think so. Age of Rebellion. Age which, of Rebellion. I can't remember which Force one. Force and Destiny, I think. They're all different modules of this particular thing. Let me see. Edge what? of the Empire is the core. So we're playing yeah. on the Age of Rebellion. So this particular Star Wars uh, tabletop game is produced by Fantasy Flight Games. Yeah, there yep. you go. And it's at Edge of the Empire. It's... Age of Rebellion, like you said, and Force and Destiny. And so these are like the three core rule books. So, and they are basically all these different, um, all these different kind of modules and like different stories that you can tell, really. Right. Um, and they're really cool. They're very, I mean, it's obviously, it's not like, you're just kind of in the world. It's like you're joining the rebellion or you're a force user and things like that. So this past Tuesday, yep, we uh, started the character creation uh, process. Yep, and, uh, we did indeed. It was long. So most of my experience has been in D and D character creation, and I believe Jesse's has too. Uh, I don't think we played really any other game. No, yeah, it's definitely, yeah. it's D&D &D, uh, stuff all together. But, you know, I think this uh, game so far is, it. it's not dissimilar from D&D &D no, in any yeah. of the character creation. It's only slightly different. Yeah, so as we're walking through it, it's like, okay, you know, they're like, pick out, I can't even remember the things you have to pick out, but. Like, you have your motivation. Right, it's like, pick out your, your X, Y, and Z, and then you're like, what is that? And then after you read the description of it, you're like, okay, easy. I get right. what's going on here. I right, get how exactly. this is going to impact my character. You know, yeah, you got to look at all the different skills and say, okay, what do they actually do and what attribute do they use? Similar to, like, how you would in D&D, &D, but right. in D&D, &D, all of us mostly know yeah. the skills by now and stuff like that, right? Yeah, so. most of us, some of us. I mean, and this is probably how new players approach D&D &D when they start to play. Right. So, if so, that's yeah. the case, you should listen to our former D&D &D 101 podcast episodes yeah we need to do another one of those actually uh, and move on with that we're gonna do a brand new D, &D session tomorrow with some people that have never played before so yeah we're helping with we'll some, get like, some inspiration and... which we're gonna actually talk about after we talk about this what like we're gonna do in that what you and i and our, our characters are gonna be yeah yeah so um so let's talk about the characters that we created for the star wars campaign because yeah. i think for this we're mostly going to just uh, do the intro module and then if we want to play it again later because like we're kind of rotating d and or dms, DMs right now, yeah or gms right now and uh because of that we're just going to start with the starter module and then maybe eventually we can do another one of these but uh babe do you want to talk about your character yeah so i always play a human anybody always. who knows me Jesus uh, Christ. but it you doesn't matter the game. options in this game yeah it doesn't matter the game my theory holds true whether it holds true for the actual statistics but it does seem to most of the time they make yeah. them very even mm -hmm. and it gives you a lot of like i feel like it's a, it's a good start uh in it you can go either path right which were like most characters you're multiple at the beginning I feel like if you go with a particular race or species or whatever we're talking about in the game that we're playing, you know, you kind of build yourself towards a certain path. And if the actual game you're playing doesn't evolve towards that path, you might get like pigeonholed and then screwed out on like older, like later levels. So 
that's the practical reason for humans. The actual reason is I can't remember who, where I read it, right? But it was like somebody. It was no, it was in the uh, Forgotten Realms book. Yeah, it was in yeah. the Forgotten Realms. You know. And they're like, yeah, I just couldn't remember off the top of my head. But they're like, humans have like a greater, you know, like potential because like elves, other long-lived species, have such a long time. You know, they burn for a long time if they're a candle, uh, and humans are just like such an intense, burning, quick flame that they have greater potential. So I always like that. So I pick humans, uh, and that's what I do. But in this one, yeah, I had a couple options. Uh, there was the basic human, which was like plus two stats across the board, things like that. Um, there was a Corellian human, which I did ultimately choose, uh, which gave me slightly better. It gave me a, a free skill in piloting, and other than that, it was basically the same as the regular human. So that's why I was like, okay, it's better, right? Because I get something for free. Uh, or I could have been a Mandalorian human. Which, yeah, and that one was really cool, too. It was, but the difference with that one was they bumped down your XP, starting XP, which you used to buy skills and stuff like that. So they bump down your starting XP by five. Uh, they bump up one of your stats. So it was like a regular human, but you had less XP, and just one stat was better. And I think one stat was actually worse, too. Which, now knowing the cost system for XP, it was net positive towards Mandalorians, but, you know... Again, you're starting to get to that point where it's like, okay, if I'm playing, like, you know, a particular type of character, which in this case probably was going to yeah. be, like, fighters and stuff, right? Where I get a little bit more flexibility with my basic human or my uh, Corellian human. Yeah. Besides, I got a free level of uh, space piloting. Yeah, I think my thing with that, too, is you had an idea that you wanted for your character. I think the Mandalorian didn't fit that. And you could have, yeah, you could have just gone with the regular human, but... Yeah, I mean, and, like, I'm thinking off the top of my head now, I, the Mandalorian, yeah, is the best one, like, you know, because, like, if you price out how how much is a level and a skill worth XP-wise, mm -hmm. uh, and I can't remember, but one of the skills is bumped to three, and that would have cost, what, 15? Or is it... A skill, yeah. 20? No, so it's, like... Five per level... For skills, or was it ten per level for the skills? I it was thought, ten per level actually, so it would have cost thirty. So, but one cost five, two cost ten, three cost. No, no, 15. no. That was that's the that's skills. Yeah, I meant it wasn't a level on a skill; it was a level on an attribute that the Mandalorian gave you, which is ten per level. So level Wait. one cost ten, <laughs> level two cost twenty. So going up from zero to two would cost you thirty. Sure. This was at level three, which all of, them, all of the humans was two. Yeah. So going up from two to three would cost you 30. So it was 30 XP yeah, no for free. Yeah, no one knows what we're talking about, though. Yeah. But it was 30 XP for free, and all you had to do was pay five XP for exactly. it. Exactly. And it, like... So the, it was a better deal. Yeah. I did a couple of things like that with my character, too, where it's like, okay, I got two for the price of one if I just buy this attribute instead with the career and whatnot. But we'll get to yeah. that in a second. But yeah, that's what I did. And then I went with a... Uh, my character is going to be much like uh, Finn from the new Star Wars yeah. uh, movies. So I'm going to have been a uh, part of the Empire, turned coat, uh, came to the Rebel side. Uh, and one of my options uh, in my background and things like that in my duty <laughs> <laughs> no. uh, is to be like always on the guard looking for people who are like, going to betray the cause, right? Like I'm internal security. So, you know, with the, the background I have, that kind of fits, right? Yeah. Uh, I'm motivated uh, by the just cause of the Rebel Alliance, you know. I saw firsthand the atrocities of the Empire. And I'm basically just a, so, like, in background and stuff like that, just a soldier, right? Uh, I do have the survivalist skills, which is like the... I can't remember exactly what it's called, but, like, basically I would have been on, like, the edge of the Empire and the you know, outer realms of the galaxy yeah. doing stuff for the Empire, and I saw some sort of atrocity out there. I don't know. And then turncoat. Things will develop as we go. Yeah. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. Hey. So there we go. Well, so Jesse's character's background is specifically correlates to my background, because uh, I'm going to play um, a Tegruta, like Ashoka, Ahsoka. Ahsoka Tano. Ahsoka Tano. Ahsoka Tano. I don't remember. Yeah. Ahsoka Tano, I think. Um, like her, um, she's going to be force sensitive, and basically she lived her.
her she her tribe of uh Tugurta are going to be kind of separated from the rest of kind of their species and they're very they were very peaceful very like monk like in a way like very kind of spiritual with the force a lot of them were force sensitive um and so my character is also force sensitive um and so a lot of them were force sensitive um and so that's kind of how the tribe of their village was kind of formed Mm -hmm. um very peaceful people um still very active probably in kind of like the government and the senate um but so they're not like just kind of out there fringe people um but one day the empire uh after order 66 69 66 yeah that would have been a long time before this yeah yeah yeah. she's older like how much how much longer we need to look into that. Whatever. Because if it's like immediately after that. No, no, no. It's not. It's um, Order 66 happened and then they went through and they tried to find others that could, because we were so peaceful, that could turn, like try to reestablish the Jedi Order. Because yeah, what I'm basically. thinking is like Obi-Wan went from being, you know, like 20s. Yeah, yeah. 30s, she was like. To being like 50s, 60s. Yeah, yeah. It would have been, she would have been a child. Like when it happened. Yeah. But then also we are taking place between the destruction of the first Death Star. Right. And the second. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. I'm still my timeline I think is still right. Yeah. It doesn't have so, to be immediately after order Right, exactly. Six. Um and so after that, uh basically the Empire comes down and destroys all of my home, trying to uh rid the world of those force users. Which also makes, because we were on the technically the light side, which makes the dark side kind of balance out and be more powerful, yada yada, that whole thing. Um, but my character lived. My character was saved by a dashing turncoat. Yeah. I don't think she's going to be into you. She's going to be like really weird and kind of like almost like a mute, almost, but not really. She's going to be, if you've seen. The hit film Aliens, which we all know is one of my favorites, she's going to be kind of similar to Newt. Like that weird, kind of scared, like. Yeah. Little well, so, girl, like, and if this happened an when you were a child, I would have had to have at least been, like, what, like 20 something when yeah, it happened? Yeah, you'd be older now. So. You're my papa now. Yeah, I'm thinking timeline wise, like, my character could be in, like, his 40s. Yeah. That'd be kind of cool. So, let's say, like, I'm, like, 48 and you'd be, like, 28. I would Does that have work said, with your age? I would have been like, like, maybe be like 18. I don't know. We'll work these kinks out later. But the cool we thing should. about to, or this character, which I don't have a name for yet, um, is because she's force sensitive, I get to use a lot of my XP on getting kind of force powers. So like force move and um, force, uh, like you can kind of, kind of convince people to do stuff you know like manipulation and things like that so yeah these are cool persuasion things. Sort of persuasion thing, yeah. yeah which i'm uh i'm still trying to work on how exactly i want to do that um in my character she she's mostly kind of focused on sabotaging whatever plans or whatever helpful things the uh empire is trying to utilize so That's kind of like her deal. But she's also, she is all about peace. And she thinks that without violence, there would be no peace. So yada, yada. Uh, She, her, I think her main goal is that she wants the Jedi Order to come back. She believes in that goodness in the world and that light. Um, And so she's, she finds that very important. And I will say our third party member is a droid. Yeah. He is also a turncoat of sorts. Yes. His character, this is our friend Ethan. Yeah. Um, Talk about him all the time. Too. We love him too. Uh, his character is a droid and basically it was a droid, an empire droid um, that was stolen by some criminals, like a high criminal society right. stole him. And so. The huts, you know, somebody in that organized yeah, crime, maybe, maybe yeah, world yeah. or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. And so they stole him. So the Empire is looking for him because of that. And then because of that, I think he he either escaped or um, got taken somewhere else. And he ended up he ends up finding himself in the rebellion. Um, 
And so both of these groups of people are looking for him because he has information as a droid. So Right. And it, I, it, not super clear on what his function was, but well, he's not a battle droid. No. His function was like something, you know, mundane. I think he did like um, tech repair or something like that. Yeah. It wasn't medicine. I know that. No, it wasn't medicine. I do know that it was like engineering based and like yeah. stuff like that. So he probably has like a lot of really... Yeah. Knowledge. So, like, the story, too, is going to go, we are, like, a, a crew in the Rebel Alliance. And, you know, so, like, you can see, like, we're kind of, like, this, like... We're the outcast. The outcast. Like, nobody's going to trust the turncoat guy, even though I'm trying to constantly make sure other people aren't, yeah. like, turning coat from the Rebels and going to the Empire. And I'm, you know... Yeah. Trying to be on their side. Nobody's going to trust the you know weird mute girl like, that was rescued I just realized me. my character is River Song from Firefly. That's yeah. what my character is. She's River Song, and nobody wants to fucking hang out with River Song. She's a fucking weirdo. I love her. Yeah. Her character is amazing. But they nobody wants to be on a team with her because she's so weird, and she's also really powerful and, like, doesn't know social cues very well. And Yeah. yeah and yeah. then we got an outcast droid, too, that, like, you know, nobody wants to be on a team with an empire droid that could go crazy at any second. No, I think, like, program too the and stuff. main thing with that one, too, is, like, Nobody wants to risk their lives just to have him on the team in case the Empire comes and finds him. Right. It's like he's always kind of a um, a way for people to get hurt. Yeah. So basically, we're going to imagine like while everybody else is getting the glory, we get the kind of crappy jobs nobody wants. Yeah. I love it. It's going to be so yeah. exciting. Let's move on to the game that we're playing uh, tomorrow. We're starting tomorrow. We're doing character creation yeah. And this kind of helps lead us into our main topic today, which is going to be a fitness update. Oh, uh, right. Because they're through our fitness. Because it's through people. our fitness thing. So I think we talked about them before. Verde, uh, Organic is... Body. They are a uh, gym that... by us. We love them. We do yoga there. We yoga. We do fit class there. We get massages fit there. Fit classes, massages. Yeah, they're all about full body health and wellness yes. uh, mind body soul sort of thing and they them. they recently added like the nourish option which now gives you like some meal plans like that they send plan. out and things like that mm-hmm. is super nice um yeah so they're doing everything and it's really about like feeling good and doing and taking care of your whole body anyways uh we're very close with the owners there we are so close that uh we're gonna play dungeons and dragons yeah. with them because they've Christina never played mighty yeah. yes we love them very much, and they're so talented. Yep, and many of their staff are also into yes. the D and Ds. In the D and Ds. Yep, we will convene tomorrow on the Lord's Day to summon a demon. Ah, uh, yes, summon. Yeah, a demon. it's funny. So again, back on Stranger Things season three. I don't feel like this is a spoiler, but in the end, they were doing this whole thing on like small town America ruined by, and they showed like some dungeons, uh, yeah, <laughs> some dragons, <laughs> <laughs> Satan, a rise in Satanism. You know, which we all know, like, in the 80s or 70s. I don't know when it actually happened. Satanic but, like, people panic. actually, yeah, thought that. And I think D&D was actually, like, linked to it back then. So, it was, like, it's funny that they put that up I on the it. Um, it was so good. Yeah, yeah. But, in reality, we're going to go and uh, do our very first, uh, or their very first D&D yeah, we're game ever. Introdu- we're helping introduce them to uh, Dungeons & Dragons. With the help of some of their staff that's also really into Dungeons and Dragons, like Emma and Carissa, like they both are very, very into it. I know Emma is very heavy in the barbarian lifestyle. Um, and yep. Carissa, she said she plays a lot of rogues and, and druids. And yeah. Druids. Yeah. Carissa yeah. is uh, my massage person. She is She's the amazing. Best. Yeah. Uh, Emma so we talk about a, it a lot well, while she does the massage. So yeah. she does a lot of druids. Yeah. Yeah. So we're playing with them tomorrow, um, and Jesse and I basically already have our characters, but we're going yeah, to be in a larger party. Yeah, we're going to be yeah. Yeah, we're going to be in a larger party. I believe that there are, supposedly on the list, not including who, or including whoever's going to be uh, our dungeon master, there's like nine people invited. Yes, which I think is still on the table. Yes. So I know, like, so we're the plan is to hopefully, like, kind of cycle through dungeon master so that we all can kind of play and it's pretty casual and things like that because i think a few of us have some dming experience me uh, you and uh one of our other members yeah and i think emma said she's done it at least once i don't think she's gonna do it though yeah carissa's probably done it but like they'll do it Chris but yeah maybe they'll do um it, yeah. so yeah so maybe like we're gonna be rotating through we're probably gonna be rotating through like people that come in and are, and are able to play and then uh dm's 
that are DMing. So, which is really cool because, again, like Jesse said, it's a way for everybody to get to play or else. I mean, yeah. some people are just only dungeon masters. That is very stressful to me. But some people love to do it. But I do like DM. But I think even as a DM, you sit there and you come up with these worlds. And you probably come up with some characters. And you're like, every once in a while, I was like, it's a bummer to not get to... Actually play that. Play that guy. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I made him. Yeah. And I buddy... think that's exactly the, the problem with... And I'm sorry, we don't we don't know his name yet. We haven't been formally We haven't introduced, been formally think. introduced to him. I think his name is... It's Emma's Billy. husband, right? They're it's married. Emma's boyfriend. Boyfriend. Okay. Um, I think his name is Billy. Yes. Yeah, I can't. I'm not locked in a face. <laughs> yeah, space. yeah. No, it's okay. Uh, his name is Billy. He he is like always the dungeon master, never the PC kind of situations, and he has so many characters built. So yeah, you feel we're hoping. Him. Yeah, and so we're hoping that we can like switch through characters and whatnot. But I have an amazing character. Yeah, decided. So um, my idea. So I never play a wizard, which. Uh, might change a lot actually i might be playing like a ton of wizards coming up soon uh, but this particular witch she's more of a witch than a wizard um and basically and i'm slightly inspired by we have always lived in the castle in this character creation um and then other kind of like kitschy gothic kind of stories and tv shows and stuff like the adams family and also like hocus pocus and things like that um in practical magic practical magic is one of my favorite films growing up so i was like okay i kind of want to like pay homage to like those kind of stories and characters so my particular character comes from her name is pepper she comes from a long line of witches uh, called the Blackwoods. And uh, they live in a big mansion in a village. Um, and the villagers of that village think that they, they're they obviously like devil worshippers. And they obviously like made a pact to get all their powers mm-hmm. with, uh, uh, with some fiend. And turns out the Blackwoods are really just like reclusive nerds and so they're basically like homeschooled witches and wizards that have like passed down these like grand library to the blackwood family that wizards all over the world come and uh and study at for a a period of time but so uh pepper is the middle child of that family and uh she's just kind of coming into her own as a witch um, and that's kind of what it is. The Blackwoods also hate the villagers. So it's like a yeah. they hate each other kind of situation. So my kind of story is, so when things start to go missing in the village, things start to go missing in the Blackwoods estate. And then, you know, plants, um, like sections of gardens, uh, statues buildings people and they all start to go missing they don't really notice at first and then eventually some of her family goes missing and then almost all of them go missing and so it's kind of like this whole town is starting to like disappear and so she's trying to figure out what happened yeah where is everybody and it's only her and her eldest sister edith left but yeah so i'm thinking so just for like the build of pepper i'm thinking she's a human Mm-hmm. Which I also never play humans, so I never play humans, and I never play wizards. Um, and I think she might be like a conjuration wizard or an evocation wizard. So a conjuration wizard, if you don't know, basically they can create items and things like that uh, to help them. Which I was thinking, because this is like a more traditional sense of what a witch is and what a witch like typically is. Which is why there's conjuration. So I'm thinking that's kind of like more like Harry Potter and things like that. Like I feel like it's a lot more like conjuration based. Or evocation which is basically like elemental. So she can cast like fire spells and like lightning spells and things like that. 
I'm still trying to decide kind of what I'm going for in that section because there's also like abjuration, which is like protection magic if I wanted to go down that route and like protect all my friends and I was trying to protect my family. Um, yeah. But yeah, that's kind of who Pepper is. And I'm so excited because I'm telling you, I never play these characters ever. And, like, I would be, with a character like this, I would be a little bit more tempted to do, like, a a warlock, like a pact kind of situation. But I wasn't really feeling that. The other option I could do is make Pepper a sorcerer, but they're witches. And then she just ha- doesn't have to worry about, like, how to learn spells and things like that. And I could do the wild magic. So yeah. we're really going to like kind of come down to it later. But which if she's a sorcerer though, maybe that'll tie in with your character and she can right. help you with that. Which I'm looking at right now. I'm like, so sometimes when I build my characters, I like to start at level 20 and then work my way back down. Yeah. To right. See you. And Big picture. yeah. Where do I want to go with my character? And that's kind of how I built out this character. And I realized that I had whittled this one down. It's been so long since... So this is a character I made a while ago that we didn't get to play fully through. Uh, But now I can't remember what my balance was. So I'm going to have to look at it again and see. Because I got... So the idea behind this character is I will multi-class. And I got to see how many levels in each I got to put. Because I had it worked out perfectly. Yeah, but talk about... But now I can't remember how much it is. So I'm going to have to figure that out now. Because uh, it, it worked perfectly with the kind of synergy. So the character classes I'm going between here uh, are Barbarian and Sorcerer. Mm-hmm. Right? And so my character's name uh, was Windward Timestill in the last one. But I might change the name. I, don't I know. think you should. That's a weird name. Yeah. My along name with is it. so cute, right? Pepper yeah. Blackwood. Yeah. I love it. But so the story behind my uh, guy was that he lived in a big port town. Um, called Port Townsend. Sorry, yeah, who knows? love that place. Uh, big Port Town, you know, ships coming in and out. So just like every youth, uh, eventually you're like, I'm going to get a job. I'm seeking adventure, blah, blah, blah. You join a ship, mm-hmm. right? So uh, he was out on the high seas uh, on a ship, uh, you know, just kind of working day in, day out. Uh, you build good muscles that way. Uh, Sexy. Got to use a Ugh. axe, right? So that's where his proficiency with an axe came from, because they use axes to, I don't know, cut ropes and things. I don't know. <laughs> they uh, rope things. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't know, but you get some sort of like background proficiency things. But he didn't spend long out at sea before a giant storm came and sunk his ship. Y'all suck. Yeah. So bad pirates. Bad. No, you well, weren't a pirate. It's just a, a merchant ship. Yeah, just a sailor. Who knows? Just what a kind of sailor. Ship, right? uh, but the storm came. And uh, wash him away. So he's seen some shit. He had a tough time. Everybody else on the ship died. Uh, Maybe. We don't know. It could pop up. Uh, But it was rough. Stranded on an island for a little bit, maybe. Survived just a little on his own. Came a little wild, right? Uh, And eventually got rescued. So he's going to be, you know, a big, tall, strong guy. Hot boy, because sorcerers are charisma based so you have to put some stats in there yeah so probably look good but very mm. silent type strong silent type too is going to be part of it pepper likes um <laughs> yeah so it'll be very uh you know because the silence will come from you know i've seen some shit <laughs> i killed the kid <laughs> <laughs> yeah it'll be uh you know he he uh, was probably a lot more charismatic in his youth uh when he first got on the ship but ever since the storm and living alone on an island for a few years uh we'll say he you know he's a lot more quiet now uh so he starts out as a barbarian but the idea i had was that he had some sort of like latent ability so sorcery all comes from like a natural source a gift uh, like you're maybe it's a warlock pack maybe he's born with it right Sorcery, sorcery is you're born with yeah, it. You're yeah, you're born with it. So, you know, there's some primordial power built up in him. So this power was the power of the storm, right? Uh, which is an option for sorcery. Storm sorcery. Yes, it's a storm sorcerer. Yeah. I just had, like, an amazing idea for, like, your big reveal, too. Yeah, you know. But so I that this know. power was built up within him. Uh, and, you know, not saying it's what caused the storm that sunk the boat, but, you know. Damn it! That's what I was uh, writing down! It could be. 
Uh, so he, you know, became a barbarian because those are the skills he needed to survive. But if he had not been on that ship, maybe, or, you know, destiny had taken another path, he would have been a full blown sorcerer, right? Using his powers of storm magic to do stuff. But on the barbarian side of things, I'm going to take the path of the storm herald, Mm -hmm. which lets me, you know, wield lightning and have an aura of storm energy that surrounds me and kind of pick some powers like that. Couple that with the sorcery powers of the Storm Sorcerer. And I'll have some, like, you know, air and lightning. And there's even some water powers and stuff like that. Kind of all mixed in. Uh, and I can, like, infuse my weapons damage with lightning. Uh, get some bonus attacks. Mm-hmm. Uh, do some extra, like, if somebody's standing too close, shock them. You know, some cool stuff like that. Basically, I'll end up, I think, at the end of it, if I do it right, I'll end up like Thor. Yeah, that's from like the your Marvel movies. Big yeah. plan. I'll be big, muscular. I'll have an axe, hammer. I don't care, whichever. Uh, maybe both. Uh, I'll be able to actually fly, too, yeah. a little bit. Yeah, I can fly a little bit. You know, I can shoot yeah. lightning blasts, uh, and I'm super strong. So, that's where uh, it's gonna end up. Yeah, I love yeah. it. I'm so excited that we're gonna get to play these characters, like. Mine was, I was supposed to really be, so I was coming up with an idea for this and I came up with it. And then like season two kind of like planning for Scraticus started happening. And I'm like, fuck, I just made this amazing character for this like D&D campaign uh, with my very day buddies. I like, I was all out of inspiration for this other one, but she's actually really cool and you guys are going to love her. So I'm really excited. Uh, but for Pepper, um, I don't know if I'll be doing any, like, multi-classing or anything like that. I can switch to Sorcerer, so I'm actually going to look at that tonight and kind of see if maybe I would be more interested in doing that. But I like the idea of, like, them having this massive library and, like, like, yeah, being coveted. Like, basically being nobility in the wizarding world. In the witchy world, but they're witches. They're 100% witches. Uh, just, I feel like aesthetically, I'm going to call them witches. Yeah. So. But they're not like gross, haggy people. But, yeah. I'm excited. I'm excited to play. Yeah, and I'm just looking at this really quick now. I'm trying to decide. I think I'm either going to do 12 levels as Barbarian, 8 levels as uh, my Sorcerer, if we or... literally ever get to level 20. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is just... So, I mean, you know, I could take a level in any of these at any time that I want. So, I'll have to pick my path kind of up. But it's like, what's the max? Okay, yeah, yeah, definitely. Because at, unless I put more into Sorcerer, I won't get some stuff. And I get get more as a barbarian, like more ability score improvements and things like that. So, yeah, I think that's what eight levels of sorcerer, 12 in barbarian. Bam. There you go. Yeah. Or what if I added like cleric to it and was able to pick the storm? Oh, like Tempest? Yeah. I don't know. I, I remember we talked about this last time. Yeah. I remember talking about it last time too. Yeah. So I could even do that. But we'll see. For now. 12 levels of Barbarian. So that means I'll probably go up in the Barbarian one to, I think, level level three when I pick my Primal Path and my Storm Aura and stuff like that, right? Then I'll probably throw, like, let's see, one level into Sorcery will get my Origin. Two would get me a Font of Magic, whatever the fuck that is. Uh, oh sorcery points so i can do magic i guess level one in sorcery doesn't really get you much yeah so i could do a little bit more spells and then maybe throw a few more barbarian and then go back to throwing a couple more in to sorcery yeah yeah for sure yeah 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 yeah, yeah. so <laughs> let's move on uh we had some more hot cakes but this episode is running slightly over so let's put those hot cakes uh aside let's pack them up we'll take them to go joyce that's what I'm going to call our fake hotcakes waitress. Yeah. Um, Sounds like a good idea. In the co-op diner where we're Because this kind of led us right into uh Yeah, Verde. let's talk about, yeah, Verde, which, again, if you are in the um, east side of Seattle area, 
You Even should if you're in Seattle out. and you enjoy driving. Yes. If you do. Come on out. Come on over. Uh, check it out. They're super cool. And, I mean, the dream is to expand, right? So, yeah, so hopefully they'll pop up by you. Yeah. Um, so, but the reason why this is leading in well to that is today we had a, a DEXA scan done. Um, and so we decided maybe we would do a diet and fitness update for you guys. Yeah, and give you guys an be, update. Yeah. So we talked about this before. Uh, we've talked about like our approach to fitness and we think this is great for everybody right is do what makes you feel good uh, mm-hmm. and do a little bit at a time just start making strides to a healthier you right yeah yeah, yeah. you don't have to do much you don't have to pound the gym three hours yeah, a day you don't have to look a th- i do which you do Boom. <laughs> you don't muscles. have to uh look a certain way to appease anybody but we want we like the idea that people are healthy and they're happy and right. they're doing things that they like to do, and they're not hurting themselves or hurting their bodies or their mental. Um, yeah, especially because a lot of the hobbies that we talk about doing and like we enjoy doing are very inactive hobbies. Uh, yeah, that's you know, it's 100% like, right. How do you counteract that? Because we got to maintain our health and our lifestyle because we want to live long, happy lives. Uh, yes. But we still want to do all our hobbies. So it's like, you know, don't drink a soda, drink a diet soda or water. Drink water. Water, preferably. We're a water podcast. We are a water podcast. Uh, water only. Yeah, water homies. Water homies. Yeah. Squirtle squad. Squirtle squad. Squirtle but yeah, the uh, diet soda thing we've done a little bit recently, I think, though, because it's a... Uh, right, which kind of goes into our When you diet, get that craving, you're like, ugh, for I sugar. need something sweet. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we were on... We were doing keto a little bit, uh, which I'm about to actually just, like, get off of which we'll talk about in our diet but you miss sugar a lot and you miss sweets and a diet soda yes it has aspartame yes it could eventually give us cancer yeah it's like a metric ton of it yeah you'd have to have so much and it's not great for you and gives you nothing nutrient wise it is uh, an amino acid it's a aspart aspartic acid is technically what aspartame that it's still great for you it gives you energy the same as sugar gives gives you you energy energy. Uh, yeah so it gives you that same kind of feeling and boost as well. So you can use it to power through a little bit. Yeah. So, so I mean, we've been kind of sipping on those. I will say for everyone out there, vanilla Coke Zero is the best. It's my favorite soda, I think, now. Like, I do like Coca-Cola and I like Pepsi. Yeah. But, um, yeah, but vanilla still, Coke Zero. But still, even though they taste good uh, these days and they're not that bad for you, Try and cut it out and just get a water, because nothing beats water. It's true. Uh, it is absolutely yeah. true. If you've never enjoyed the taste of water, there's something wrong with you. Yeah, you should go to a doctor. Yes, because we all know, you take that sip of water. Oh, it feels so good. And it, yeah, it just it feels good. It tastes good. You're just like, ugh, water is the best thing. No, Literally all of us in our lives have all said this sentence. We're like, ugh, water is the best thing in the world. Yeah, exactly. Like, you know, you're you super thirsty, you take a sip, you're like, ugh. Yeah, you're playing sports as, like, a kid, and you get, like, a sip of water when you've just been, like, dying, like, on a field, and you just need it. So, yeah, so we're a huge water podcast. Yeah, we're a water But we also squad. agree with, like, if you had to have to have a soda or, you know, craving for, like, some ice cream some or something. Sweet. Yeah, sweet. instead of, like, speci- like, caving into that, which we do sometimes, you cave, just do it in moderation. Yeah, and that's okay. Yeah, yeah it's okay. Um, but if you can kind of keep yourself a little bit in check maybe just replace it with the diet soda you know yeah do that but um so let's talk about the dexa scan yeah and um basically what it does is it's a scan yeah so that, you're lying on this table yes and the scan part is kind of like an x-ray and it goes directly over your entire body yep. um and it measures the amount of total it takes, like, mass a while too like six minutes uh, yeah. Total mass, fat tissue, lean tissue, bone mineral content, and total body fat. It breaks it all down, your entire total body composition. And so Jesse and I lately have been going pretty hard. Um, yeah, we're always dieters. Gym. We're always working out somehow. Uh, but in the last I was month. trying to say active, but now we are actively working out. Yeah. I'd say in the last month, we were like, okay, let's kind of get to the next plateau where we can actually get a little bit more performance out of what we're doing, right? Um, we we have goals in yoga that we want to accomplish. We have goals in fitness we want to accomplish, you know, 
goals in general that were like okay yeah and let's it's like let's see life how, got a little less busy yeah let's you know. push it a little bit harder see how close we can get to that uh to those things so uh because of that we were dieting a little bit more extreme that's why i was on keto uh we were at the gym more often you especially i would go multiple times but we'll talk about that in a little bit and all of this was really leading up to this dexa scan which gave us like our total body everything so do you yeah. want to do we want to share well yeah so uh i'll say so i am six foot three you are six to start off with you're a big boy just so everybody knows oh boy uh these numbers yeah and my total mass is 218.8 pounds yeah uh so that is pretty for right your size, for somebody yeah. who's my size and you know i'm shooting for having more of that be muscle than fat mm -hmm. for sure uh and i'm getting there but you know it's still a ways to go uh my fat tissue is 69.3 pounds which Eight. makes it 31.6 nice. percent of my body fat mm -hmm. is my of my body is fat so it's a little bit more than i want we have a handheld scanner uh yeah. which of course you never trust them right Don't. they're not nearly as good they're not trustworthy. Uh, but yeah, it's about half of what this number is, is what the handheld scanner gives me. Yes. So that's the number I've been tracking to. Uh, you know, I've been trying to whittle that down to a certain number. Um, so. Turns out my number should be half of what I'm trying to whittle it down to. Yeah. And I think it's good, though, because you got it down so far from like. As far as we know, because I'll say this is our first DEXA scan. We're going to yeah. do another in two months. Yes. Uh, so we will have an update from there. Yeah, an update. But we, I believe that it's gotten down. I mean, if the handheld thing is bright, my body fat must have been about 38, 39% mm -hmm. before last month. Yeah. Uh, and then the last month I got it down to 31.6. Yeah. Uh, and you look great. Like Jesse really in like this last month because he's been focusing a lot on diet and on exercise, but a lot more on exercise. He has definitely, like, you can see he's gained a lot more muscle. Yes, uh, and my is lean kind of tissue is 142.4. Yes, which? Pounds, so. And I also, I am, like people say, big boned. Uh, judging by, I, all I really have to compare it to is everybody else's scores. All the rest I of actually am big boned, because my bones are 7.2 pounds, we believe. They don't actually have the LBs in there, it says yeah. BMC. Bone mineral content, that's yeah. the amount of bone mineral content if you in the body. Up, it, I think it works that way. But yeah, it's like 7.2 where like everybody else's is like much smaller and they're not that much smaller than me. I also got a high I'm bone 4. density 7. report. I was so. the smallest amount of uh, bone mineral content, but we also found out that uh, my bone density is uh, not great in the... Uh, it says that there, it's it'll fix itself once, uh, like if I keep up lifting. Maybe I should have more calcium. Yeah, probably but take more calcium. Uh, That's one of the things I read that like not great. Everybody should drink more calcium, or drink more milk. Yeah, or get calcium somewhere. But not me apparently, because mine is in the uh, upper echelons yeah. of uh, calcium. So you're just pretty good. Yeah, my bones are solid as so rock. So strong. Uh, so yeah, big boned apparently too. Yeah. But yeah, those are my quick numbers. Uh, yeah, I'll give yours. Yeah. Yeah, I'll give my quick numbers. So I'm a lady and I don't give my weight. I'm just kidding. I totally do. So my total mass is 142.3. I am 5'7". And uh, I'll let you guys know I'm 27 years old. So um, that's pretty. I have a healthy BMI. Um, yeah, I have more lean tissue than she does entire yes. body mass. Yeah, it's true. Jesse, Jesse's muscle weighs more than my entire body. Yeah, it was a sploosh. Um, yep. So that's my total uh, mass. Uh, my fat tissue is 42.7. Um, and my lean tissue is 94.9. So what does that put your so body fat at? My body fat is at 30%. Yeah. Yes. And so I will say, so my the hand calipers for how off they are. Mine we also have a, a different chart than this one to. has. Oh, does it really? Oh. Yeah. Well, so, and on this chart, because there's like a body fat percentile chart, it says I'm in like the 40th, uh, I'm probably in like the 50th percentile of women my age. So, I mean, that's not bad. And here's the thing. Like, I was, I was the first one that went this morning, and I started to feel like super down on myself. Like, 
Jesse was right after me, so I couldn't talk to him about it. Uh, Richard and Ginny hadn't gotten there yet. They did theirs. Uh, so I messaged some friends from, like, Scraticus, and, like, I messaged, like, my best friend in the world, and I'm like, I feel really shitty now. And they were so supportive. But now I have a better understanding. I was ready to self-sabotage. I was ready to head to Starbucks, get a caramel macchiato and a cookie. Yeah. Yeah, I was about to do it. But um, once, like, Jesse came out and then Jeannie got her scores and Richard got her scores, and even Christina, who owns Verde, she got hers and we're all kind of comparing them. And none of ours were too far off. We live a healthy lifestyle, so we're yes, all we're very generally healthy, fit healthy. people. Yeah, and so when I was thinking about these numbers after the fact compared to where I was last year, where I was about 30 pounds heavier, had no muscle, barely left my house, uh barely did anything active, uh, genu- genuinely and generally depressed very often. Like, I'm in so much of a better place than I was then that these numbers don't scare me anymore as much as they did. Sure. So yeah. I, I think, like, basically what they kind of show is that, you know, we feel good. So, like, what do these numbers really mean anyways? Uh, yeah. You know, it's something to work on and things like that. But as long as we're happy healthy and you know 30 flirty and thriving yeah Yeah. we're doing okay anyways and so that's why like so if anybody is thinking about doing this just don't get wrapped up in it yeah you know as long as you feel good yes as long as you're trying trying is like the most part and then keep trying yeah exactly you feel powerful when you do it so um i think that that's really important yeah um but so I think one part that was um, really important for getting this is we got a resting metabolic rate, which I have been struggling with how many calories I should eat every day. And so I was doing keto and um, my calories were slightly higher than what this recommends, which this recommends like 1303 calories a day. And resting yeah. metabolic rate, for those that don't know, is basically this is the amount of energy your body consumes uh, if you're just laying down in your bed all day and yeah, you do not the guy said it's like if you're just laying down watching Netflix, yeah, this not is doing shit. not doing shit. This is how much your body uses. And so these are the numbers that like if anybody out there is tracking their calories, those apps will give you this number and or in a close approximation. Yeah. yeah, this is actually this is one of the yeah, one of the key benefits of this, I think, is they gave you a much more accurate number for you specifically yes i agree because we're all different right you know there are other dudes out there that are six foot three uh that might have more or less in this number right yeah uh you know there are other women out there your age your weight your height Mm -hmm. that are gonna have a different number for this so you know if we try to do our diets based on what we read on the internet uh on how much we should eat every day or how much these calorie trackers are telling us We'll get close, and if you feel good doing it, keep on doing it that way, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. Uh, but to get a real accurate picture, like, I always find I'm tracking my calories. I'm like, I'm not losing any weight. You know, this must be way off from what I need to do. Yeah, it's really hard to – I feel like it's really hard to self-correct on calories, too, because some days I'll weigh more, but it's like you're – you have more water weight or something like that. And that's like another thing is like, I I think one of my things, so when you get this done at Faraday, uh, you also get to create like a plan for mm-hmm. like kind of goals that you want to accomplish before your next scan. And I think one of mine, which I didn't put on there, is I want to look at the scale less. And I think that these numbers really focus on that because I'll shift kind of into my updated workout plan right now. Is so I am less interested at this point in losing weight, um, and rather gaining more muscle. Cause sure. um, I'm just way more interested in that. Um, cause at a certain point you lose weight and your weight bounces around and you're out of maintenance and stuff. But I want to be like really strong and I want to be able to get into those yoga positions that I like and things like that. So yeah, and I think you know. Even if you're shooting for like a low percentile in body fat, you're talking twenty four percent according yeah. to this this chart too, right? So yeah, exactly. Uh, but I've been focusing more on like gaining muscle. So at right, but I'm saying you could get that probably 
You could probably hit that in a month. You could get down to 24%. Me? That's you know? also a part of my goal. Or, you know, the two months. You could hit that. So then where do you go from there, right? right. The only other option is to Muscle. increase your fat along with your muscle. So it maintains a 24% uh, variation as you get heavier, right? Yeah. Because you'll, your weight will actually go up. But you'll maintain leanness, you know, just by increasing your muscle more. Exactly. So. Right. And so to do that in the gym, so I'm still doing yoga, uh, Monday, Wednesday, Fridays, and Saturdays, whenever yeah. we can. Um, and then I'm also, I've upped my cardio, which I used to not do any cardio. I was like, do not sign me up for cardio. I'm not interested. Now I'm doing, um, at first I was doing a, like between 10 and 15 minutes before I started lifting. Now I'm doing uh, 30 to 45 uh, before I start lifting just to really get my heart rate up and keep it steadily up. Um, and then after that, I am working on a program called Strong Curves. And I want to say the reason, I mean, I do like having a nice butt. I think that that is a major plus. It's a benefit, yeah. Yeah. But um, I have really bad knees from playing soccer. And it's because uh, there's a tendon that leads down your hip and to your knee and past it um and it kind of goes off mine specifically goes off of the track sometimes so it's easy to like tweak my knee or uh for me to just injure my knee while just doing exercises a way to help that is to focus on glute specific exercises right and that's really what strong Mm -hmm. curves is too so it's a lot of squats it's a lot of glute bridges it's a lot of clenching yep yeah yeah so um, I'm actually really excited to incorporate it. And I think if uh, you're a woman and you want to get into lifting, it's a pretty good program. There's a really good book. There's an awesome subreddit. Check it out, R Strong Curbs. Um, and I would recommend it because I've been on, this is about my second week. So I know it's not that long, but I've already, like, I've already stepped up my weights, like, in almost every single workout. Which is so, I mean, it's so empowering with, I mean, especially when you're a woman and you may not be as strong in, the, in many areas. So uh, to be able to do that just because you're just doing it consistently and you're getting right. stronger and you see differences and changes in your body. And I think that the next time we do these scans, there's going to be a huge difference in the areas where I have the most For amount sure. of. Per, like body fat which is my gynoid which is my butt my glutes yeah and then so my yeah legs. this is actually so they do break it down into regional areas yeah. here which is nice they have your arms your legs your trunk which is the majority of your torso it, yeah it's like your ribs the top the uh it's bottom. lower than that that's like i think you said it was like belly button no i uh, heard it was basically like from where the ribs do that little curvy thing and then up. See, so yeah, I think it was the top of your belly button and up. I and think, then the android region is the lower abdominal region. I think it's like lower breastages up is trunk. Yeah. And then from there, like from the lower breastages to like the bottom of your abs. Right. Is android is like android. the ab region, but I think it's yes. just the lower ab region specifically. I don't think so. But yeah, that's but actually like also then gynoid would be the next one, which is the upper leg area. Your butt. Yeah, your glutes. Your so glutes. the gynoid and android regions are your core. Yeah. And everybody talks about core. They're not just talking about your abs. They're it's also, also talking glute. about <clears throat> and your yeah. back and your glutes. Your hip flexors. Yeah, those sort of things. Yeah, which I have <clears throat> the most amount of fat in my gynoid and my legs. Which is very obvious, like, when you look at me. I have always had super massive, powerful thunder thighs. Uh, years yeah. of playing soccer. So um, that's where a lot of my mass is. Now, that's where your total fat tissue, or is that your highest region fat percentage? That's my that's total the other region reason... fat percentage is higher in those areas. But yeah, because Android mass... is definitely just lower. Because my total mass on that is only 17 pounds. And my trunk's 110. So there's no way this... Is 110. My legs are 17. 40 or 59 pounds, and my yeah. butt is 28 pounds. <laughs> but yeah, so I think it's belly button down is the Android. That's the only way I can rationalize this number of 17 pounds. Well, my Android is 9.3 pounds. 
Yeah. yeah. There's no way your entire abdominal region is 9.3 pounds. Well, yeah. Okay. And you say and that because your trunk is how much is trunk? trunk says 60. I, yeah. I got a lot of tr- junk in that trunk. <clears throat> right. But it's mostly muscle. Yeah. I, I mean, yeah. My trunk is 110.8. Uh, I will say, so my, I carry most of my, like, percentage fat in my android but it's only 7.5 pounds of fat there so like it's not a whole lot of fat in the body terms of things it would only lower my body fat down by like two percent to get rid of it Mm -hmm. uh maybe a little bit more but you know the trunk has a good bit of fat in it as well it's a 38.4 percent and it's 42.5 pounds so definitely, I think, you know, that's this upper belt here. So, you know, I've got a little bit of a some love handles, right? Kind of this donut thing that a lot of men have, right? In particular, a lot of everybody has uh, gut fat, right? And so for yeah, sure, that's what, there. yeah, that's what we see here. Like, I'm generally fit across my arms uh, and legs, uh, my trunk, and that's why I say like the trunks including, because if you look at the scan on the upper body part, it's not very much fat, mm-hmm. but in the lower part, there's a lot more. So it throws off the skew of my trunk. And I'm basing this off of like the regional body fat percentages would put me in the 20th to 40th percentile for my arms and legs. Yeah. We just got to work yep. on that. I mean, you can't really target. You can't target. So this is one thing you can't target regions to get rid of fat. Now, you can target, apparently, visceral fat. Yeah, which is another part of our DEXA sub- skin. Yeah, subcutaneous fat. Yeah, so visceral fat, for anybody that doesn't know, is the bad kind of fat. Mm-hmm. The fat that gives you... It's linked to type 2 diabetes, uh, higher diseases, things like that. So if we all picture in our lives that old man that drinks like a six-pack of beer all the time, has like a big round be- beer belly, but it's hard, it's not soft and jiggly like santa claus uh it's hard that's visceral fat that's in there it's hard fat Mm -hmm. and it sits underneath your muscles uh close to the organs it's hate and anger and the grinch the grinch is a great example example of of visceral fat yeah he has a lot of visceral fat subcutaneous fat now is the fat that's between your muscles and your skin uh and is jiggly and pinchable is the word they use in here, right? Uh, so if you can kind of like pinch a region and kind of pinch up some fat, mm-hmm. that's usually the uh, subcutaneous. And so visceral fat, really, it's where your organs are. So it's going to be in that trunk region, uh, you know, what is it, the uh, the android region. Right. You're not going to have it in your arms and legs and stuff. Not a huge deal there. So, you know, I have uh, 3.18 pounds of my overall yes. fat mass, which again was 69.3, being uh, visceral, visceral fat. And um, so what they want for you to have the amount of pounds is zero. Zero. Yeah. The target is to get that to zero, as close to zero as possible. Unless you're like a performance athlete, most people won't get to zero and be able to maintain zero. Mm-hmm. So... You know, you try to get low, but and most everybody else doing the scans had a low number. Mine's pretty high, so I was this the winner, is my winner, target. Chicken dinner, uh, yeah. of the visceral fat. Mine is at zero point one eight, so I'm the closest to zero. And the person I was talking to was like, "This is great. You don't really need to worry about this. Just keep doing what you're doing. Um, don't worry about having to get it down very much because." Not very many people do, except for, like, high-level athletes. But I think yeah. women don't have as much Yeah, I, I think general. it's something, uh, They, I believe they said this to me, but I don't know. But I, that men do tend to get it a lot more. More visceral fat. Because yeah. women's fat is on, like, the outside of your organ. Like, more of the... Yeah, just it's just women are more likely to get uh, their fat as subcutaneous. Yeah, subcutaneous. men are more likely to get visceral fat. Yeah, so, yes. Yeah. And, you know, I think, not to rag on my dad, but it's we love him genetic. So much. Yeah. I think there is a predisposition to have visceral fat in my family. Uh, yeah. So, you know, that's where we're at. But definitely, that's my number one target. Out of this scan, I'm going to target my visceral fat. And in two months, I'm hoping to get that to 
zero yeah. or you know less let's, than one right yeah let's talk about your goals a little bit well let's so we're getting kind of close to the end of our episode uh why don't we end it with kind of now that we have these DEXA scans what were some of the um specific goals that you want to kind of do before your next scan visceral fat kind of lowering that was a big yeah one for you. so like personally i've been hitting the gym hard to try and uh build up my muscles you know tone up a little bit and then try and just you know get that picturesque muscular look yeah tell uh, them about your uh your workout routine yeah so usually i wake up in the morning and this is something i'm going to continue doing um I was waking up in the morning and I was starting with uh, some lifting. I, I started doing strength training pretty much only. I didn't do enough cardio really over the last month, mm-hmm. uh, I think, because I was looking at my body fat numbers and I'm like, these aren't so bad. I figured the DEXA scan would be a little higher. We right? were figuring, yeah, but yeah, it was not. It doubled. Uh, yeah. So it was- I'm going to have to keep this new plan up, which this new plan, uh, inspired by a friend of ours, right, was to... Demir, yeah. Demir, yeah is I'm going to start doing 45 minutes of cardio every morning. So as soon as I wake up, you leave. Uh, I go to the gym. I do 45 minutes of cardio. And now this is going to be long, uh, low-intensity cardio. Uh, and by low-intensity, I mean my heart rate isn't going to go up much because I, for some reason, have a hard time getting my heart rate up that early in the morning. Um, but it tends to spike my heart rate the rest of the day. So... Mm-hmm. Uh, so it's going to be long. It's 45 minutes uh, of that every morning. Yep. Then I lift usually for <clears throat> uh, an hour to an hour and a half, depending on the exercises I'm doing. Monday, Wednesday, Fridays, upper body, arms, shoulders, chest, chest and back, back. respectively. Mm-hmm. Tuesday, Thursday are all uh, lower body, legs, and abs. So I'm going to start adding abs more to every day because I also learned that that's where I have the least amount of lean muscle tissue. Mm-hmm. So I want up my lean muscle tissue there as well in my Android region. So, which is a common thing. Like for men, the glamour muscles are the shoulders, arms, yeah. chest. And That's what I work on. Most of the times focus on legs and abs yeah. and things like that. Which looking at mine, like you've kind of inspired me because uh, my lowest total region fat is my Android. So those are my abs. Uh, which I'm actually pretty proud of. Um, and then, so my, that, but that is also my lowest lean tissue, which yeah. is only seven pounds, but out of the 9.3 pounds in that region. But my arms, though, uh, are at 33.4% fat, um, and they're 14.8 pounds total, 4.9 being fat, 9.3 being lean tissue muscle or lean tissue pounds. Yeah, you should try to shoot it over 10. You yeah, know? that's what I was thinking. Yeah. But go on. Uh, yeah, because yeah, that's not all my gym people. Where, yeah. like, already that's, you know, if you're doing the math here, it's two hours and 15 minutes. There's more. Oh, there is. Uh, more. Yeah, so then usually I'll follow that up uh, afterwards with either a cool down run or something, or not. It depends on the day. Because mm-hmm. when Raven gets home, uh, we then go to the gym again. Yes, before we go to yoga. Go to yoga, yeah. And I have another hour in the gym where I try to do 15 minutes of high intensity running. So there's uh, good benefits from high intensity, good benefits from low intensity running. Uh, but like I said, I have a hard time spiking my heart rate yeah. heart rate in the morning. So it's easier to get the high intensity later. So 15 minutes of high intensity and then uh, some light lifting because I don't want to blow my load before yoga. <laughs> right. We don't right. want to get too tired before yoga. Yeah. So yeah. some really light lifting just to practice some moves and stuff. So, you know, because anytime you're going to do a lift at the gym practice it ahead of time with like some lighter weights make sure you got your form good so it's spend my time practicing form for about you know 45 minutes or so and then we do yoga for an hour do yoga for an hour yeah which... so all told i'm doing a little over three hours four hours maybe most days uh and yeah. really i've been consistent on that for about a month uh, and it was a ramp up i started doing just an hour a day i think the first day i worked out this last month was like 30 minutes Right. right, and that's like an the hour step day. that you could take is like just that thirty minute like quick routine. Right, because like we had gotten into home. some vacations, other things yeah. in our lives. We had gotten to where our only workouts were yoga. Yeah, which right. is, which is a great. good workout. However, I have the I see it now as more of like my active rest. It is. It's because, exactly that. Yeah, yeah, because it's it's not too extensive. I think if you're trying to maintain and you're keeping like 
uh, your diet is like on point and you're being very healthy, I think yoga is your only form of uh, workout is, I mean, you could totally do that. But if I think that supplementing that with like heavy lifting, you're going to like lose more weight and cardio, oh, you're going to lose more yeah. weight for sure. Yeah. So yeah. So after the scan, I'd say, you know, the changes I'm really making is I am, you know, the cardio is a relatively new thing for me uh, that I just added back in or whatever. Cause as I went from 30 minutes to an hour a day to an hour and a half a day, I was doing a little cardio, but then I backed down to just lifting. And then now I'm going to add in some more cardio and I think I'm going to stay consistent with that from now until the next scan to a target that visceral fat, uh, mm -hmm. along with a few dieting changes I'm making probiotics are apparently very good for targeting that. Uh, I think everybody should give a try for a probiotic, um, healthy gut, yeah, healthy gut stuff, you know, increasing things like that will help w target that. I'm going to try and lower that as priority number one. Mm -hmm. uh, along with that, I think that will shrink down my, uh, you know, Android region so that one of the measures they gave us is you don't want your Android region to have a higher body fat percentage as a region than your overall body fat percentage, which is where I lie right now, right? Yeah, I so know. So I got to convert that and it will drop my overall total body fat uh by you know just getting rid of the visceral it'll drop me a few percent so you know i'll be down another percentile because right now i'm sitting at the edge of the 80th percentile so i'll be down in the 60 to 80th range uh just by getting rid of that visceral fat so that's all i gotta do get rid of it and then i'm there so that's goal number one and that's how i'm gonna do it and diet wise you know people in the past might know i did the carnivore diet I'm still kind of sticking to that. I think now, you're going a little bit more closer to low carb and keto. Right, I am. Yeah, it's, I, as I say, I, I'm sticking close to that, but I have now a better target for my calories. Because uh, what I was doing was my trimming calories was 2,000 and my bulking, bulking was 3,000. Uh, I think 2,000 is was even too much basically because my metabolic is 1,750. Yeah, right. and you really want a deficit and kind of like, so that's what our resting is. Yeah, I'm trimming is. right down to 1750. I think we're going to do, yeah, where he does 1750 minus 1303, and we're going to do that and work out heavily every day. But we're going to stick to those metabolic rates because yeah. we're maintaining a set calorie goal, but we're also building muscle on top of right. it. Right, so and then if you not, feed your body with yeah. proteins and fats as opposed to carbs... More energy. Well, you don't have more energy. That'll feed your muscles, prevent muscle your muscles from being eaten. Yeah, yep, yep, yep. Uh, yep by yep. your body, and your body will turn to those fat stores and say, "I need some extra energy to go through all this exercise," and it'll start eating the fat stores. Now, this might happen faster than two months too. We might get to the point where, like, we're starting to hit some fatigue and run out of energy, and our bodies are clearly shedding fat. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll be able to tell. Yep. All right, and then at that point, we'll have to think of something new yeah. never get stuck on anything but, yeah. but that's was, my plan was that your like second goal or your first goal like yeah so my first goal is a visceral like, fat sheets were um oh, your right. fitness goal your uh what was it well so there's fitness diet uh fitness diet men like mental self health care, yeah, self care and dexa and then our dexa so yeah my fitness goals were to attend so we go to yoga monday wednesday and friday uh tuesday thursday nights were busy unfortunately or we could go to yeah. hit class but i've got some time in the middle of the day if i move around some meetings and stuff i'm gonna try and attend a hit class at least once a week mm -hmm. there's also the one on saturdays so if i don't make it during the week i'm going to that on saturdays that's a good one right then uh that was my that's your health one and then an hour of cardio every day Okay. So, so even on my rest days, which are Sundays, uh, you know, active rest days, I want to get an hour of dedicated cardio, even on that day, mm -hmm. right? Um, so, you know, there's that. Uh, that was that. Uh, the food wise, I want to track my calories every day. It's going to be the main one. In carnivore, they don't encourage you to track your calories. Uh, so I fell into that habit. I was tracking them loosely, but I was tracking them inappropriately because i was eating too much right still right so i'm gonna try and trim that down and track more appropriately now mm -hmm. uh still remain under 35 grams of carbs you know yeah, yeah. stick in that direction yeah. yeah uh mental health what did i say 
I don't remember because you filled it out without me. I'll yeah, I was you. sitting okay. there staring at it, and I'm like. I was trying to think of all the things. Oh, you know, yeah, because be, you asked like, me. I do that. I, like, I do that already. Yeah. I do that already. Uh, so I can't quite remember. And then my DEXA scan was getting my fat down to zero, which <laughs> is my visceral fat. So Your visceral fat down to zero? Oh, yeah. your visceral fat. Sorry. I was thinking like your total body fat, and I'm like, no. Jesse. No. Visceral <laughs> fat down to zero, which is totally doable. Uh I think I could kiss zero. I don't think it's going to be anything permanent. Uh, and realistically, I'm thinking as long as I'm less than one, I know what I'm doing is working. Yeah. And I'll just keep doing that. Uh, if it's around the same as it is now in two months, I clearly have to change something. Yeah. So, yeah, those are my goals. Now, how about you? Okay. So, my goals, um, so for the physical goal, my workout goal, uh, it was to do... Four days of lifting or yoga a week. Four days. So I can't do any less than that. I could totally do more. And I probably will do more, like, I'll do cardio and whatnot. But I have to make sure, like, okay, if I'm not doing yoga today, I have to lift if I'm not going to that yoga class. Yeah, um, that's why you should have said five days. Well, maybe. Maybe up um, it to six. Uh, maybe. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then uh, under that as well, I want to do one kind of unique active activity a week. So something that I don't normally do, like hiking. I don't do that very often. I don't go swimming very often. We don't go play soccer. We don't go kayaking as often as I'd like. We got tennis rackets. We don't <laughs> do tennis. Yeah, these are all things we used to do every once a in lot. a while. Yeah. yeah, and I want to get back into it because I those are all I am. I love being an active person, and so those are all things that I like to do like soccer for an example I I have played soccer in some shape or form since the fifth grade and so I'd like to get back into doing that uh and right. doing it more often and that would be and, like, an softball. active rest yeah it's right? our active rest and we want to do that where like, like you're Sundays. still active but you're not like sitting at the gym you know it's yeah. like it's, we like the gym we you're like... still fatiguing your muscles but you're yeah. giving your mind a break um, yeah you're it's like a different kind of mindset that you're putting yourself into which right. is really fun you don't think about it you know yeah. and you're like oh great <laughs> exactly Keep so your muscles going. so that was something that i wanted to add in that was kind of a fun one that wasn't just like okay i just want to do this four times a week and then be done with it uh, for my diet, I also put tracking calories because I'm really bad about that when we go out to eat or when I have an alcoholic beverage. I yeah. am really bad Say about no tracking to alcohol, it. alcohol, kids. Yes. It uh, might not have a lot of carbs or uh, calories in the drink itself. Most of them do, though. Uh, yeah. But even if it doesn't, alcohol slows your metabolism. Slows your metabolism for like 24 hours. So, but anyways... I am really bad about tracking it, so I'd like to get better at tracking it. And what I was doing for the past, like, month or, like, maybe half a month, I was doing keto mm -hmm. because I was like, man, I haven't lost a lot of weight in a really long time. I've been very... Shake it up. Yeah, yeah. I wanted to shake it up. Um, and I was tracking my calorie or my carbs, my protein, my fats, my macros. I was tracking them all very closely I want to continue to do that, but I'm not going to do keto anymore because I just don't think that that works for my body. It works for a lot of bodies, and it's worked for my body before, but at this stage of my life, it just doesn't really uh, tick my boxes. So I'm just going to move on from that and go back to my flexitarian lifestyle where I can eat veggies and fruits and be happy. Yeah, and you know, I think on top of that was the whole thing of don't stick with something if it's not working, and then also... Make sure you constantly check in and adjust as needed. So, yeah, exactly. You know, and I like to poop. Everybody likes to poop, and this diet it does not make that easy. So, I'm gonna keep that in the podcast. I don't really care. Yeah, that's fine. So, um, and then for mental, um, I put that I was going to read an hour a day. Uh, that kind of goes with the whole book and bitch thing. Like, I don't give myself enough time to read, and I love reading. So, um, I'm gonna read at least an hour a day. Um, and then my DEXA scan uh, goal is I'm going to lower my body fat 5% by the next one. In two months, I'm going to be down 5%, which will put me right in between the 20th and 40th percentile of women my age, which I think is a good place to be. I don't yeah. think that's, like, too much to kind of try for just because, like, the next one is, like, elite athletes. So that's the next, like, section right after this one. And I'm like, I'm not an elite athlete. 
Right, but wouldn't you like to be there for at least a day? Mm. Do I get to that's eat my goal. ice cream? <laughs> well, yeah, that's the thing. It's like once you get there, you can say, okay, I made it. And then I'm you can here. always say, this, tell the story of, yeah, one time I was super fit. I was I yeah. was hot. I was elite. I, I was, was up elite. there. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, all those like pro football players and stuff. Yeah, I, yeah, I, could, I, I was like I was them. one of them yeah. for a moment. Yeah, yeah. I was right yeah. there. Um, so those are my goals. I think this was a great episode, but it's running a little bit long. So let's wrap it up yep that's it uh okay so uh hopefully you guys uh enjoyed it and hopefully anybody out there who's thinking about taking the plunge into a healthier lifestyle will do so you can uh yeah reach out to us listen to our other podcasts on the topic as well get some ideas on what to do uh and and we'll have another one of these in like two months yeah we will definitely do an update on it do an update um but yeah other than that uh make sure to check us out on our twitter instagram facebook yeah at co-op the podcast yep. uh you can also check us out on our website at co-op the mm-hmm. uh and you can check us out on patreon patreon.com slash co-op the podcast yep and check out bookandbitch.com as well and at book and bitch pod on twitter and no, Instagram. that's book a and d yes okay Spell all of them are and. book and a and d bitch pod pod on Twitter and Instagram. Okay, yeah. Just make sure you spell different. and. No ampersand. No ampersand. No. I don't think you can as like a username. I don't know either. I yeah. think I might have tried. I don't know. But go look it up. If I'm wrong, I'll correct you in the next episode. <laughs> yeah, we'll find out. Uh, go give those a look out. Uh, Jesse, where can we find you on the internet? Yeah, you can find me at Jesse, J-E-S-S-E-C-O underscore O-P on Twitter, Instagram. Yeah. Yeah. You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Raven underscore Coop or Co-op, whatever, however you want to say it. But that's where you find me. Um, And yeah. That's it. So let's wrap it up. Okay, bye.